Hey everyone, this is Josh with another Bitcoin and blockchain tutorial available at chain2uts.com. Today we're going to be doing a high level overview of blockchain databases. You've probably heard the term blockchain if you've had any interest in cryptocurrency or maybe even other business applications like finance or real estate. Blockchain has become kind of a buzzword and uh, it's a really interesting technology and a core part of what makes cryptocurrencies work. This is just going to be a high level overview, but we'll have a technical follow up video coming as well as an article on the website. So let's start out by discussing some of the properties of blockchains. First, blockchains are generally distributed. There are many servers, many nodes, many computers on a network working to validate transactions in a blockchain and make sure that the data is secure. Blockchains are cryptographically secured. So cryptographic algorithms are used to help make sure that transactions are indeed valid and allow the history of the database to be maintained. And as a part of this, blockchain databases are designed to be immutable. What this means is that over time, historical data contained within the blockchain becomes difficult, improbable, if not impossible to modify. So how does this compare to traditional databases? Well, with a traditional database, like a MySQL database or a Cosmos DB database, control is generally centralized. It means that there's one party or one organization that has trust and control over the database. So for example, there's an IT administrator you trust to back up the data and make sure that everything in it is secure and valid. And maybe a business analyst has read access to that database so they can look over historical customer transactions and make some business decisions. Contrast that with blockchain where everything again is decentralized. It's controlled by different nodes on the network running this set of protocols to decide what's valid and what's invalid to include in the database. As well, traditional databases are generally easy to modify. If you have a MySQL database uh, running on your web store, for example, it's really easy to delete old customer accounts or add new transactions that occur on the site every day. By contrast, blockchain databases make it so that historical data is very hard to modify or remove, if not impossible to do so. So how are blockchains secured? Blockchains use a concept called distributed consensus whereby all of these interested nodes on the network that are running the blockchain software, for example, in an application like Bitcoin, all follow a set of software protocol rules that are designed uh, for that application specifically. So for example, with Bitcoin, there are certain rules about what makes the transaction valid and uh, what you know, allows the money to be issued, for example, in the mining process. If any node on the network tries to break these rules, all of the other nodes working together will reject these invalid attempts to modify the blockchain because they don't follow these rules. This also requires a concept called proof of work. What proof of work is, is it's generally a race conducted by all of these different nodes on the network to solve a cryptographic puzzle. This cryptographic puzzle is kind of includes a summary of all the data included in each block in the blockchain. So what that allows over time is for blocks to be chained together using cryptography. When a node on the network finds an answer to this cryptographic problem, it tells all the other nodes that, hey, I've solved this and I have this block of transactions that are all valid by the rules of the network. All of the other blocks can easily and independently verify that that proof of work answer is correct and then indeed all of the data included in the new block is valid and following the protocol rules. Now what would happen if some malicious party tries to modify a transaction say five blocks back in the blockchain? Well this is where the chaining part comes in. Every block includes some information that is a summary of the information, the data, the transactions included in the previous block. So a new block contains a summary of the previous block, which contains a summary of the previous block, and so on and so forth back to the very beginning of the chain. Well, if you recall this proof of work 
cryptographic puzzle, all of the information that goes into solving that proof of work can't change. Otherwise, it changes the answer of the puzzle. So, if a node on the network were tried to say, for example, change a transaction five blocks back where Bob sent Alice $10 and said Alice sent me $50, that node would have to redo the proof of work for every single block up to the current one in order to make sure that it's following the protocol rules and answering the cryptographic puzzle correctly. Because if one bit of data changes, all of the proof of work changes up to the head of the block and the other nodes in the network will reject that block and say it's not following the rules. So it becomes difficult, if not impossible, for data to be forged because of this chaining of the transactions. Again, every block contains a summary of the data included in the previous block and because of this cryptographic puzzle work that's done through proof of work, it becomes nearly impossible to modify the data over time. Now we do have some videos describing how proof of work is conducted more in depth if you're curious about that, but it is an integral part of securing the blockchain when combined with this concept of chaining blocks each step of the way. So what are these blockchains actually useful for? They you know, seem expensive to run because all these computers are giving up their resources to do this proof of work. And all this decentralization might make it hard to coordinate and make sure that you know, certain business rules are being followed or certain business decisions can be met if you know, anybody can run this open source software. Well, blockchains fit into a more specific niche than traditional databases do. They're really useful for applications where trust has traditionally been a problem. So for example, in something like money, in digital money, there's a high incentive for fraud. If you're a person that's greedy and you can get away with stealing other people's money because you're trusted to maintain a database of transactions, you might be very tempted to do so. With blockchains, this trust is eliminated by decentralizing the work of securing and validating all the transactions of money being sent between people. So with a blockchain, you don't have the traditional need for trust that you do with uh, even traditional banking systems where money is issued by a central government and transactions are validated by trusted people in a banking system. Blockchains are also really useful when immutability of data is critical. So obviously it's very important that financial data be immutable because you don't want Bob to be able to say he got $50 from Alice when she only gave him 10 in the past. You know, this could make the money system completely unstable if you have a cryptocurrency and pretty much make it useless. Now, this blockchain concept can actually have some really interesting applications in the future when it comes to other sectors. So for example, real estate. It's been, you know, proposed that blockchains could be used to track the transfer of real estate over time between different owners, rather than having a county or statewide database of who owns what, where a central record keeper has to be trusted to maintain this information. As well, it could be used for things like medical records, where it's critical that records are maintained for things like patient safety and insurance purposes. So this has been just kind of a brief high-level overview of how blockchains work, how this chaining is conducted, how proof of work ties in, and what blockchain databases are actually useful for compared to traditional databases. As always, there's an article on the website that accompanies this video, and we'll have a more technical video upcoming. And as always, I hope you found this video interesting and informative, and thank you very much for watching.